Welcome to worship at First Lutheran Church and School. Today is a special day in the life of our congregation, the day we install Andrew Apple as our pastor. This day has been years in the making, but it is finally here. There are many congregations in the church without a pastor, but God has blessed us with a proven and faithful shepherd to lead us into our future. We celebrate God's goodness as we receive Pastor Apple in his new role as sole pastor of First Lutheran Church and School. Lord Jesus Christ, you have established your church to be a temple and dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. We give thanks that you continue to provide shepherds to feed and serve your flock in this place. We humbly implore you to strengthen the labors of all those who minister word and sacrament to your people, that they may increase in knowledge and grow in service to you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice 
and be glad of it. We join together in the invocation and the opening <coughs> sentences. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise His name, proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and worthy of grace. He is the year of all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before Him. Strength and glory are His sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of His name. Bring Him honor and come on to His courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Join together and sing. Let us pray. 
you this morning to worship and praise you, the one and only true God, who has revealed yourself as the creator of this world, the one who is indeed our redeemer and the sanctifier, your Holy Spirit. And this morning, Lord, we bring to you our praise that indeed you demonstrate your un, uh, our, the undeserved love that you freely give us through Jesus. And we receive that, Lord, here in word and sacrament. But this day, Lord, we also celebrate that you have heard the prayers of your people, providing them a shepherd to lead them forward into those harvest fields, that many more may experience the joy of your salvation. We now ask you, Lord, hear this prayer in the name of the one and only true God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We invite you now to greet one another with the peace of the Lord that we have received from the Lord. We share that with each other as well. Someone told your grandparents, and someone told your great-grandparents, 
you have the privilege of telling your children and your friends and your neighbors and sometimes even people you don't know about this God. So that they too can know how much he loves them and he loved them so much like he loves you so much that he would die and be raised again to give us life everlasting. So remember, it's not just Pastor Andrew's job, Pastor Apple's job, to tell others about Jesus. It's also your job, and my job, and your parents' job, and everyone who is part of the family of faith, that many more may know of the Lord. Can you fold your hands? And let's pray together. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving us, thank you for loving us. so much by sending Jesus that we could be forgiven, and tell others too, that He loves them, and forgives them. Amen. Alright, thanks for joining me. You can go back to your seats.
Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father twelve princes, and I will make him into a great nation. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time, and at the field. When he had finished talking to him, God went up from Abraham. Then Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all those born in his house were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and he circumcised the flesh of their foreskins that very day, as God had said to him. Abraham was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, and Ishmael, his son, was thirteen-year-old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. That very day, Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised. All the men of his house, those born in the house, and those bought with money from a foreigner were circumcised with him. The word of God, the people of God. Amen. Amen. God.
reading from Mark, the eighth chapter. And Jesus went on with his disciples and to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say, Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and, and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake in the Gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? <clears throat> for what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in his glory, the glory of his Father, with holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, God. Grace, mercy, and peace be invited each of you in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Well, indeed, my dear friends, this is a day that you celebrate. You celebrate again uh, God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness in meeting you here, speaking to you here, feeding you here on word and sacrament. Today you are also celebrating God's faithfulness in hearing and answering your prayer for a pastor. Indeed, we have a, a faithful God whose promises are always true, and particularly we can celebrate today that His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, as the prophet Jeremiah said. But I bring you uh, this morning greetings from the 192 congregations across the Florida Georgia District, the 59 schools and early learning centers, your partners in the gospel. Indeed, we celebrate with you not only what God has done throughout your long history as a mission congregation of the Florida Georgia District, but in the work that God has for you to do in the coming years. Well, this morning I would like to draw your attention as we begin to our Old Testament reading. And Pastor Apple, I have to tell you something. You heard that reading about Abram, right? At least you didn't have to wait till you were 99 years of age to be called. Now, Pastor Brian, <laughs> uh, I know you're not about 89 years of age. But there is something for us to stop and ponder on in this regard. Because of these wonderful words of history, of how God has worked, how God works through His people, we have this wonderful reminder that no matter our age, our stage, our phase, or station in life, the Lord calls us. The Lord calls us to be His people, His witnesses, His servants. And in Pastor O'Brien, we certainly have a wonderful example of one who has not only done that for many years here at First Lutheran Church, but also throughout as many roles that he has served within the Florida, Georgia district. And for that, I, on behalf of the Lord, say thank you, my brother in Christ. Just to 
make sure you understand the beginning that this message is not all about Pastor Apple. The Word of God is for His people, and that is for me, it is for each of you. And even that word from uh, the prophet today, we have this reminder that as a people of First Lutheran Church here in Clark, uh, Clearwater, that you would take these words to heart. Please know this. God is not done with you yet. Until your last breath, God still has a calling upon your life for you to be His servant, His witnesses, to bring the saving message of the gospel to the world and to the neighborhoods and the community that is around you. And our reading from Romans says this, that you are justified by faith, and we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and we not only rejoice in this, but in our suffering. So how many of you came here this morning with it on your mind that you wanted to thank the Lord for your physical ailment this morning? <clears throat> that you wanted to thank Him for, you know, working on your taxes like I did the other night and saying, I owe how much? <laughs> or, you know, whatever loss or broken relationship or <clears throat> sorrow or disappointment or hurt that you are facing or you have. How many of us would come in here like Paul saying, I rejoice in my sufferings? My dear friends, why can we say this? Why should we say this? Because when we realize those sufferings can be used by the Lord, it drives us not only to our knees, but it drives us to the true hope God's love poured out for us through Jesus Christ, His suffering, His death, and His resurrection. Our only source and place for help and hope. Today you receive Pastor Apple as your sole pastor, shepherd, equipper, and servant leader. But I have to tell you something about him. He's a sinner. You already know that? Sometimes people elevate, now that, that I say that, I realize I'm kind of elevated. <laughs> Sometimes we elevate our pastors as those who somehow, in a sense, are on a pedestal, you know, in that they've got it all figured out. Yeah, I've got it figured out. Kind of like Paul saying, what a wretched man I am. Because I'm a sinner. Pastor Apple, he's a sinner. He may serve in the office of ministry as your called pastor. He may serve as one to whom you can and should look up to, but he is also one for whom Jesus died and rose again. You see, God loves Pastor Apple like he loves you and he loves all people. While we were still yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Right in the midst of our, our brokenness, our sin, our need. And that gets to the heart of our need. So what Pastor Apple will proclaim, as he has been as your specific ministry <coughs> pastor up to today, what he will teach, he too needs and needs to model. That is confessing his sins. That is repenting and turning and seeking again to live as one of God's redeemed, as one who has been reconciled unto God the Father himself. Pastor Apple, one of the most wonderful privileges you have as a shepherd of God's flock is to teach them who Jesus is. Yet this is more than giving them information. 
It's more than just theology of the, the teaching and the doctrine of the church that we have come to accept and believe are in agreement with Scripture. It's more than conveying the facts or even what others say about Jesus. No. You, my friend, you have the call and the privilege to disciple them, to understand, and to celebrate not only who Jesus is to others, but who Jesus is to them personally. Now I'm going to put you on the spot. Because, Pastor Apple, I'd like to ask you this question. Who is Jesus Christ to you personally? I give you one minute. <laughs> yep. Who's Jesus Christ to you personally? Go ahead and stand up. Turn his mic on, please. All right. There we go. Well, in the seminary, when they say, when the scriptures say, be ready to give an answer, you know, this is great. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Christ is the one who came and connected me with my Creator, with the one who died for me. Jesus is the one who sticks closer to me than even my wife does. Jesus is the one that in the midst of my darkness and my despair reaches down and keeps my feet from falling into the pit. Jesus is the one who, when all others would turn their back, is the one who turned his face to me and said, For you, I do this, and went to the cross. Jesus is the one who continually feeds me. Every time we take, we receive communion, Christ is there strengthening my faith, and Jesus is the reason why I am here today, for it's only his call that makes sense and to why I would be a pastor. And it is my greatest privilege, joy, and honestly, <laughs> something that only he could equip me to do, and that is share him with each and every one of you. Through ministering the sacraments, through teaching and preaching the word. And Jesus is the center in everything. Of all that we are and do. Thank you. For about a minute, I think I went over. You did. Right? <laughs> I tried. I went about all my legs. Keep it short. There you go. There you go. They're going to they're hold you to that in the future. Hey, Pastor, how many of you do it like last week? You, yeah. You know? <laughs> my friends, I wanted you to hear that from him, and I did not set, tell him what we would be doing. That is a man of faith. That is a man who not only knows the information, he knows the Lord Jesus personally. And I can tell you right now, and you probably have already seen it in these past years, it will drive and it will undergird how he preaches, how he teaches, because it is not a job. It's a calling, it's a privilege, it's a joy to be able to bring this message as one who has personally experienced to share it with the people of God. He indeed knows and he believes that Jesus came and died for him. He knows him personally as a Savior. But now I've got to tell you something else. Are you ready? Yes. What Pastor Apple will teach you and what he preaches will not save you. Hold on now, right? What he believes will not save you. Now, I used to catch parents off guard and grandparents when I would do an orientation meeting to start a confirmation class. And I would say to those parents or those grandparents, what you believe will not save little Joey or Jamie or whoever it was. No. 
The only thing that will save them is what they believe personally. What he believes is right, and it will bring him that gift of God's grace and salvation by what he believes and he professes in the Lord Jesus Christ. But it won't save you. You have to believe that. You have to profess that. That is how we receive this incredible gift of God's grace. What I'm getting at is verse 28 of our gospel reading where we have this. But what about you? Who do you say that I am? Pastor Apple, our calling as ministers of the gospel, as pastors, is a disciple to teach, to mold, and to share with God's people the very truths of the scriptures. It is our call to plant seeds, to water those seeds, but it is up to the Holy Spirit of God himself to lead those people to faith. For my friends, you see, it is only what you say, you believe about Jesus that will save you. When you think about the mission of First Lutheran Church and think about those that you have been called to reach that are around you, it is only what they will believe about Jesus that will ultimately save them. Our purpose for existing as individual Christian congregations is not just to give people information. It's not just for them to have this general knowledge or understanding of the name of our God. It is not even for them to know what Christians say or believe about Jesus. No. Our calling and our mission is to make disciples. To share the message of God's love and His saving work in Christ so that that is freely given to all who call upon Him as their Savior. So Pastor Apple, my prayer for you is that the Lord will continue to richly equip and empower you for the various tasks that are ahead of you. Task of preaching and teaching. The task of sharing the amazing gifts of grace in the sacraments. The pastoral care of equipping the saints for works of service and mission. The task of leading God's people into the harvest fields that many, many more may also come to say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. That they may experience the joy of the Lord's salvation, both for this life and for eternity. Um, you as pastor and people know that God has called you to be Christian witnesses. He is ambassadors to reconcile others as his servants. And yet, my friends, you know, just think about your own mission statement. We are deeply committed to our Savior Jesus Christ, desiring to lengthen and strengthen his kingdom. I like the language of this. To lengthen is to expand it, to move it beyond those who are here. It isn't just about in the church. We are just to gather together, hunker down, hang out with people like us. But instead, as the ecclesia, the called out ones, we are called to go out into the world to be those lights in that darkness, to be those ambassadors and those witnesses. We, my friends, are called to go and to lengthen and strengthen his kingdom that others too may be his witnesses. And yet I wonder, do you really understand how critical and urgent this calling is? Do you realize that today in America, only 48% of Americans been surveyed two years ago only 48% had any connection to any house of work. Less than half. And did you notice that I did not say to any church? Because it is any religion. It's Jewish. It's Muslim. It's Hindu. It's Mormon. 
Less than 50% of America have any religious connection to a house of worship. And on any given weekend, less than 20% of America will do what you're doing right now. Will come and worship. And it is nearly 30% of America today that says they have absolutely no spiritual belief, no spiritual foundation. They're what is referred to as the nuns. N-O-N-E-S. They have no spiritual belief whatsoever. Friends, if it's 50%, that if you consider the metro Tampa Bay area, you have a ripe harvest field, are you ready? Of 1.5 million people living without saving faith <coughs> in Jesus. The fields are ripe unto the harvest. Now your task, my dear friends, it is much easier when you see that the need of those around you without Christ is no different than your own. Sinners. Sinners without hope on our own. But you have the solution. You have the answer. You can share the one who is hope incarnate, Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. A few of you right away are saying, well, I've never had the training to do that. Or I've never taken an evangelism <coughs> class. I, I've never been asked to do what Pastor Apple just did to stand up and just say, just say who Jesus is to you. But I believe there's not a person probably sitting in here this morning who has not <coughs> encountered the living, loving, and forgiving Lord. Every single one of you sitting here today, like me, we all have a story to tell of who Christ is and what He has done in our lives. And if you were to speak from your heart like He just spoke from His heart, people listen. They don't need a theological dissertation. They don't need you to you know, uh, go through ten Bible verses. You need to speak from the heart and from the scriptures that you know to be true. And if you capture their attention, they will continue to listen to you as you reveal that truth. My dear friends, that is our call. That is your task. And yet we know that at times we fail. We fail to tell that neighbor. We fail to encourage that person we can see who's struggling before us. We, we get in our cars and you know we pull into our driveways and our garages and sometimes we close the garage door before we're even out of the car. Because there was somebody we just didn't feel up to talking to. And when we fail, when you fail, Turn to Jesus. Turn from your sin. Repent and receive God's forgiveness through Christ and start all over again. Forgiven. Remember, my friends, regardless of your age or your situation, whether 99 years of age, whether 9 years of age, whatever your stage and your place and circumstance of life, Remember, God is not true with us. He's not true with you. So we are continually being refined. We, my friends, are continually being sanctified to be more like Jesus so that others too will know the mercies of our God that are new every morning. The mercies of our God that we receive from Jesus alone. May the Lord truly bless you as pastor and as people together. Sharing the one and the only true message that brings life, salvation, and everlasting joy. Amen. Amen. And amen. Be
join together now in singing hymn number 861.
continue now with the rite of installation. Please stand, Pastor In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loved in the Lord through the church's usual order, the Reverend Andrew Apple has been called by the Lord of the church to be the pastor of First Lutheran Church in Clearwater, Florida. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by setting them in the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear what the Holy Scripture says concerning the institution of the office of holy ministry. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. From John's Gospel, chapter 20, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Hear what the Holy Scripture says concerning the responsibilities of the office of the Holy Ministry. St. Paul writes in his first letter to Timothy, Do not neglect the gift you have which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. Devote yourself to them. So that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in these, for by so doing, you will save both yourself and your viewers. <coughs> Peter writes in his first letter, Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your time, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Hear what the Holy Scripture says concerning the strength and promise God gives to those in the office of the Holy Ministry. And again, St. Paul writes in his second letter to Timothy, Continue in the things which you have learned, and be assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Matthew chapter 5, the word of Jesus. You are salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, how shall it be saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor can people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. 
Dear brother in Christ, the Lord grant that you receive and keep these words in your heart, so that you may be strengthened and encouraged in your labors. God gathers his church by and around his holy gospel, and thereby also grants it growth and increase according to his good pleasure. That this may be done, he has established the office of the holy ministry, into which you have been called by the church, and have been ordained and consecrated by prayer and the laying on of hands. It is fitting that you should, again, acknowledge the responsibilities of this holy office in which you are to serve as pastor of this congregation. Therefore, in the presence of this congregation, before our Lord God, to whom you must give an account now and at the last day, I now ask you, do you acknowledge that the Lord has called you through his church into the ministry of word and sacrament? I do. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and Athanasian creeds, as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, because they are in accord with the Word of God. I also reject all the errors that condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Oxford Confession to be a true exposition of the Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the apology of the Oxford Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small choral articles, the treatise on the power and privacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith? Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the word of God. You promise that you will perform the duties of your office in accordance with these confessions, and that all your preaching and teaching and your administration of the sacraments will be in conformity with the Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you faithfully instruct both young and old in the chief articles of Christian doctrine? And will you forgive the sins of those who repent? And will you promise never to divulge the sins confessed to you? Will you minister faithfully to the sick and dying? And will you demonstrate to the church a constant and ready ministry centered in the gospel? Will you equip the Lord's people to undertake their roles in the Lord's mission? to seek and save the lost? Will you admonish and encourage the people to a lively confidence in Christ and in holy living? Yes, I will, with the help of God. Finally, will you honor and adorn the office of the holy ministry with a holy life? Will you be diligent in the study of holy scripture and confessions? Will you be constant in prayer for those under your pastoral care? I will, the Lord helping me through the power and grace of the Holy Spirit. And now I address you, the congregation of First Lutheran Church. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture says, Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no advantage to you. You have heard the solemn promise of him called to be your pastor. Now I ask you, will you receive him? Show him that love, honor, and obedience of the Lord that you owe to the shepherd and teacher placed over you by your Lord Jesus Christ? Will you join with him in the mission God has given his people to bring his saving work to all people, beginning here at home and reaching out to the whole world? And will you support him by your talents, gifts, and pray for him always, that in his labors he may retain a cheerful spirit, and that his ministry among you may be abundantly blessed? If so, then answer, we will, with the help of God. 
We will the house of God. We honor and uphold your pastor as he serves Christ in all his God-pleasing responsibilities. Will you aid him as he cares for his family? Will you be diligent to put the best construction on everything, recognizing that love covers a multitude of sins? If so, the answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Let us pray. The Lord Jesus Christ, eternal Son of God, who sits at the right hand of the Father and gives gifts to all people, sending pastors, teachers, and others for the work of ministry and building up of the body of Christ. We thank you and we praise you. Grant now to both pastor and people your blessing and grace, that together they may do what is pleasing in your sight, bear fruit that will last, and obtain finally everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God strengthen and assist you always. Pastor Apple, are you ready and willing to assume this public trust and responsibility? I am. <clears throat> Andrew Apple, I install you as pastor of First Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, he with you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite uh, the clergy to join me in offering a prayer of blessing scripture over Pastor Catholic.
Okay. This is my personal card that I'm now giving to you. This card was on the visor of my car from June of 1993 until November of 2008. <laughs> <laughs> it says this, my God will meet for supply all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So uh, there'll be a lot of days of joy, Andrew, and there'll be no days that um, you may not want to get out of it. <laughs> because uh, this life, uh, we live in a sin-tainted world, and we deal with our own flesh, um, and we deal with people who are sinners as well. And yet how wonderful to know God's promises from Psalm 46, that he is your refuge and strength, and ever-present help in time of trouble. And you continue to cling to those promises and those very truths that reveal the character and nature of your God and Savior, though in peace and serving I now invite the, the clergy to return to their seats, and I invite the congregation to join with me in the prayer of the congregation to find on the screen before us. <coughs> Ever living God, strengthen and sustain your servant.
with a loving helpmate and wife and uh, Ren Renna Ann. And we pray, Lord, you will continue to bless their relationship, their marriage, their family. And that, Lord, all that they will do will be done together for your glory and your purpose. We pray to bless this dear couple, Lord, in Jesus' holy and powerful name. Dear friends in Christ, I introduce to you your sole pastor, Pastor Andrew Gray.
ill creature, though we deserve nothing of your kindness, you sent forth your Son, born of the Virgin by the Holy Spirit, to fulfill all righteousness, to atone for our sin and for the sin of the world, once for all, by his all-sufficient sacrifice upon the cross. You rise from the dead, deliver to us also everlasting life. Gathered in his name, we pray that you to bestow upon us the fruits of his redeeming work as he promised in his own testament. To you alone, O oh Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. We pray with confidence in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we do not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do as often as you drink in remembrance. As often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Our Lord Jesus. The peace of our Lord be with you all. And also with you.
community today will continue this line, starting here with the elements, coming down the sides, and up uh, the center of the road. Welcome to the table.
time of farewell, let us hear the word of the Lord. I thank my God and all of my remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer joy. Because of the part, your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion of the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus, Philippians 1. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15. From Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven. <coughs> from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth, for you had ever performed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed when you go out. Deuteronomy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all the blessings you have bestowed on this congregation through the ministry of your servant, Pastor Brian. By the Holy Spirit, grant him grace that by his example of faithful devotion to your word, he may continue to be a blessing to many. In your mercy, support and strengthen him and grant him a cheerful spirit, peace, and blessedness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Pastor Brown. <coughs> it wasn't in your bullet. Well, my bullet. <laughs>
And you, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amen. You are called, called to share the good news of God's plan of salvation. The Lord is assigned to each his task, just as Paul says, I planted the seeds of Paul's water, but God made it grow. The man who plants and the man who waters has but one purpose, each to be rewarded according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. <laughs> Pastor O'Brien, would you lead us in the benediction? always meant a lot to me because it's not just I saw so I'll see you next week. Yeah. It is God placing his blessing on the gift of people. It's always been important to me. So now I say to you, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you Tell others who Jesus is sharing the message of God's love. Thanks be to God. We owe the Lord's name to tell others.